comprehend. To think about how to prevent it from being continued. The Allies had begged the Pope to associate himself with the Declaration, to join the Declaration. And both Churchill and Roosevelt urged the Pope, sent the Pope Caskett's report, and urged him to sign on the grounds that he did not have evidence that these things were as Karski said. Initially, the State Department had refused to join in the declaration or agreed only to do so if the word alleged was the alleged crime, the alleged atrocity. And it was Winston Churchill who persuaded Franklin Roosevelt that no, these aren't alleged crimes, these are real crimes that the story Karski has brought us is a true story. When Czekanowski told me that the president uh, summoned us to the White House, as you can imagine, that was facts. It was gestures, gestures, gestures. <laughs> Justice, freedom shall prevail. American people are friendly to your country. They will help after the war. You will tell your nation that they have a friend in this house. Do you know what question he asked? Do I understand correctly, young men, that before the war, Poland was essentially an agricultural country? Yes, Mr. President, it was so. Well, now, what we understand in the Russian campaign, the Germans had to use tremendous amount of horses. Did they take those courses from Poland? Because with your agricultural economy, you need horses. Mr. President, yes. Po rozmowie z Rooseveltem zrozumiał, że nikt nie pomoże Żydom podczas wojny, że dopiero po wojnie się poroz, porachują z Niemcami. Roosevelt, he would always talk about how he felt he was in the presence of a lord of humanity, somebody with supreme power in the world, uh, somebody who could get anything accomplished. And I think he always made that point by what... To przynajmniej jakiś konkretny, żeby ktoś nie ratował. Niektórych to uratował, a ja, ja chciałem uratować miliony, ale nie mogłem uratować nikogo. He believed at that time that his mission had been a total failure and that those to whom he told his story had not listened and had disbelieved it. I believe that uh, Karski's mission, Karski's report, were a turning point in the way in which Western governments and therefore the Western publics approach the plight of the Jews of Poland. From that moment it was clear that this wasn't just yet another of which there were so many examples of German atrocities all over Europe against all sorts of people, but that this was a deliberate attempt to exterminate, which was the word used in those days, to murder a whole people. What we know today is that Karski's mission may have played an important role in the U.S. government's decision to establish the War Refugee Board, which would end up saving as many as 200,000 Jews, mainly from Hungary and Romania. So I think what Jan Karski's story tells us is, if the opportunity arises, take it. Don't not without fear, he wasn't 
fearless person. Nobody is fearless in war. But somehow to encourage young people that if you find yourself in a circumstance, whatever it is, where you can do something to make a difference, let Karski's story be one of those that inspires you to try. Yes, people, all of us probably, we have infinite power to do good. And we have infinite power to follow people. We are all schizophrenic, as I see our nature. We have a choice. We can choose to be robbers, we can choose to be good people. But our Lord has left us the choice. Many people choose choose. In 1944, Jan Karski published the memoir story of a secret state. It became a New York Times bestseller. In 1952, he received his doctorate from Georgetown University. He continued to teach there for 40 years. In 1965, Karski married the Polish-Jewish dancer, Pola Narinska. In 1982, Israel's Holocaust Memorial, Yad Vashem, recognized Karski as one of the righteous among the nations. In 1994, Israel bestowed on Karski the rare distinction of honorary citizenship. In 1992, Karski's wife, Pola, took her own life. Karski died on July 13, 2000, in Washington, D.C. He was 86 years old. In 2012, President Barack Obama bestowed on Jan Karski the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the highest civilian award of the United States.